My name is Steve Phillips from Tintree. Today we're going to be talking about installing and configuring Tintree Global Center. Tintree Global Center is the preferred methodology for monitoring and managing all VM store devices from Tintree. So the first step is to log on to the Tintree support portal. If you do not have account, there's a link here at the bottom of support.tintree.com. Click on that link, it'll take you through a quick process to get you an account. If you do have an account, uh, you can log in here with a credential. And the first thing it'll take you to is the products page. So the products page shows you all of the arrays that are under your account. And the account can be shared among many people in a organization. In this case, here is a bunch of lab systems that we have internally at Tintree. So the first step to getting Tintree Global Center uh, is to generate a license. So you're going to click on this little three dots here and you're going to say request TGC serial number. So that once you click on that link, uh, it takes you to a box that says I, I want to generate an additional Tintree Global Center serial number. This screen only pops up if you already have one in existence. If you do not, uh, it will just go ahead and generate one for you. So you would go back in here and say either no or yes. Uh, you go into the product tab again and then back in the products tab there will be a list of all of your products, including your arrays. Uh, we just have one array here, but most of these are all Tintree Global Center. We tend to demo this quite a bit, so there's a lot of uh, serial numbers in here. So the next step is to jot down the number that is generated. This one is a good example. So TGCS 201029-1043. Uh, this is the unique identifier for this particular Tintree Global Center instance. And so any dial home data that comes from this device uh, will be attached to your account. Next step is to go to the downloads page. And under downloads, you see here's where you download Tintree OS. Here's Tintree Global Center. There's a number of other downloads, including plugins, toolkits, uh, utilities, things of that nature. But we're gonna go to Tintree Global Center. This version that we're gonna be demonstrating today is an early access version at the time of the recording of this video. So Tintree Global Center 5.1 and above are the flash free versions of Tintree Global Center and also contain VM store management functions. That's what we're going to be demoing today. In this video, you will not see 5.1 here because we have not published it to the main website. But the important thing is you go to where it says download OVA once you have the correct version uh, and it'll say either GA latest or GA recommended and you click on download OVA. So that will generate a download uh, usually it's just a little bit over a gigabyte in size, and this is a virtual appliance image that is downloaded to your downloads folder. Once that is downloaded, uh, you then go to vCenter, and then you can say to deploy a new OVF template. Uh, by the way, we do have Hyper-V versions, as I showed earlier here. Uh, we're going to be using the vSphere version uh, during this video. But now we're going to deploy a template. We're then going to pick a local file. We're going to upload a file. I'm going to go to my downloads folder and then I'm going to pick TGC. It shows the name of the file. Click next. We're going to put it in our data center folder here and we're going to call it Tintree Global Center. You can call it whatever you like. We're going to put it in our compute cluster. You can see here these are the space requirements. Typically we recommend this be placed on a Tintree if possible and then thin provisioned. Click next. Accept the license agreement. We're going to, in this, in this case, we're going to put it on this Tintree device and I click thin provision up here. We're going to put it on the VM network. Uh, it's going to have a static IP address, which can then be put here. So here's where you put in the license code that was generated earlier. So it's TGCS, six digits, and then four digits. So make sure you use the one that you generated uh, to make sure that it is uh, tied correctly to your account. Uh, we're going to call it uh, TGC. We'll give it an admin IP. Obviously yours may be different, likely will be. This is our lab environment. And then once I have these filled in, click next, it'll show you what it's gonna do. And then you'll see here, it'll start to import it uh, into vCenter. So you can see here, here is the VM. And we'll watch these bars go until it's completed. Okay, now that the import is complete, we can power on this VM, so let's refresh it. 
and we're going to power it on. Now it's booted up so we can close the console and then what we'll do is we'll reload the admin IP address for the Tinsure Global Center instance. So the services are starting up and what we'll do is we'll log in as the admin user and the password we're going to use is the serial number that we created. So now we have the initial setup screen. So here what we're going to do is we're going to put in a email for alerts. Uh, this can be any email you like it to be. It could be an, an IT group, um, an administrator's group, whatever you like it to be. So I'll just say use a fake one in this case. Put in your SMTP host. We highly recommend that you send us nightly reports from this so we can uh, watch the performance of this particular instance. Uh, we can also gather dial home data to make sure that uh, pool recommendations are being done correctly, uh, a number of things. So, so this is where you would fill in your information. This is what gets added to any cases that might be uh, assigned to this particular TGC instance. So if there's a problem with the software, we know who to talk to. Down here, we have a time zone field. We have a NTP field. So if you have a time server internally, or if you want to use the uh, public ones in, at the NTP organization, you can do that. Uh, we also have DNS here. So we have a couple in the lab. We can add those in. And here's where you're going to generate a password. So this will be the new password to replace the serial number that was used to first log into this field. So I'm just going to type in a password here. The requirements are there. So I can go back and check all of my entries here, make sure I've got all the right things. And then I click set up Century Global Center. Okay, so now the admin instance has been fully completed. Uh, we can see here the serial number is listed here at the bottom. Uh, I just use all zeros, but make sure you use the one that's meant for you. Uh, this happens to be running 5.101. Your version will likely be different as this is an early access version to show you all these features that uh, we need to show you here in the video. So the next step in the process is to make sure that your TGC instance has all of the licenses that you have in the support portal. So you're going to go to Explorer and then Settings. And then under Settings, there's a field for licenses. So in here, we have a set of two types of licensing. One is a standard license, one is an advanced license. The difference for a standard license is that for some of our legacy products, we did uh, not include a license with TGC for those arrays. So if you have uh, legacy arrays such as T500s, T600s, T800s, or T5000s, uh, you can get a serial number on your support portal. And that is on your dashboard page on your under products. And there's a button here that says TGC licenses. So any TGC licenses that you would need for the legacy arrays would occur here, would appear here. Any advanced licenses uh, that you would need would also be here. Advanced licenses are used for uh, functions such as pooling and for uh, SQL integrated storage, which we'll talk about in a different video of this series. So going back to Global Center here, uh, you notice that uh, we need licenses for 500, 600, 800, and 5,000. So what I'm going to do is the, the box that I happen to have is a T800. This happens to be the license that was generated for the T800. So I'm going to add a license in. I'm going to paste that in, click Add. And now you see I have a standard license available. And you can add other licenses before you begin to add VM stores if you like. You can do them uh, all at once. You can do them one at a time. The next step is we're going to go back into the Explore tab and we're going to add a VM store. So in this tab right here, we're going to say Add or Remove VM Stores. We're now going to put the host name. I prefer the uh, host name generally, but in our lab environment, you're going to put the IP address because I don't have it any uh, in DNS. So in this case, it's 86.13. We're going to use the admin password for the VM store, and then I'm going to click Add. Now you can see here that I've added it. So now I have one VM store uh, in this environment. So now you see that the VM store has been added. So we're going to go back to the main page. As you can see now, it's starting to fill in more data about this particular environment because now there is a VM store in the environment. So you can see we're starting to get IOPS readings, throughput readings, latency readings, etc. Now, if you click on VM stores, 
it'll be presented with a list of all the VM stores that are in this particular system. So in this case, here's my VM store. If I want to go to the overview, I just simply hover over that three tabs, click on overview, and now you see this is the dashboard that would normally show up only on the VM store UI, for those of you who haven't used Tintry Global Center before. This will look very, very familiar. This is an HTML5 rendering of that same dashboard screen. So all of the same information is there, but now it's in a sub tab of the VM store uh, section of Tintry Global Center. You'll notice on the left-hand side that there's a green link. So what that link tells me is that the VM store is, is correctly configured and connected to Tintry Global Center. If there was a break in that connection, if there was an admin network failure or the VM store was down, uh, that would then be broken. So you would see a red symbol of a broken link. In this case, that tells you that everything is fine with the connection here. So now that we have Tintry Global Center up and running, in our next set of videos, we'll go through some of the features and configuration options that you have from this particular tool that were previously required to be used from the VM Store UI itself.